What is the most horrifying scientific theory that many people do not know about? Story 1. You can split a person's brain down the middle, entirely severing the connection between the hemispheres. By showing things to different parts of the visual field, you can give information to the hemispheres separately, so one hemisphere can know things that the other does not. As far as we can tell, both hemispheres are conscious beings with hopes and dreams. Usually, one hemisphere can't speak, but from non-verbal indications, we can clearly see it has a very human level intelligence. Other times, both hemispheres can speak. Split-brain patients don't notice nor particularly care that they are split-brained. Neither hemisphere seems perturbed by the separation. Verbally, split-brain patients say they can't even tell. And as far as we can tell, it's not like the nonverbal hemisphere is screaming quietly or anything. The splitting process just doesn't seem to impact people very much. Although I did see some reports of people's left hands doing actions that their verbal hemisphere didn't seem to agree with, unbuttoning shirts they didn't like, etc. What does it mean that we can cut our minds in half and not even notice? What does that mean about our everyday existence? What does that mean of our perception of ourselves as a coherent consciousness? Do we really communicate so little with ourselves that we wouldn't feel the sudden separation of half of us? What else about ourselves might we not even notice? On the other hand, I guess it's also kind of inspiring that somehow everything still more or less works. Story 2, VCJD, the human form of mad cow disease, may have a decades-long incubation period and cause thousands of deaths in the future. In cattle, the incubation period can be up to five years, but we have no idea whether or not it could be longer in humans, and there's no routine method to detect the prion which causes it. Almost half a million infected cows entered the food chain, but only a few hundred cases have been reported. Essentially, anyone who ate British beef in the 90s could be at risk of a horrible death, with no way to predict or prevent it. Story 3. Solar Super Flares Basically, it is a huge solar flare that probably hasn't happened in our solar system. But we have observed stars that have weaker magnetic fields than the sun that exhibit super flares. The largest solar flare that we have recorded was the Carrington event. It happened in 1859 and was so strong it could be seen with the naked eye and even set telegraph systems on fire. That was only 1 to 10,000 the energy of the largest known super flares. If one were to happen, the effects would be pretty grim. Airline passengers would receive high doses of radiation. All satellites would be damaged, but probably broken. The ozone layer would be screwed. Loss of most radio communications. And for a strong one, the sun's luminosity increase could cause ice to melt as far as the moons of Jupiter. Story 4. A strangelet is a hypothetical particle that is composed of up, down, and strange quarks. For comparison, a proton is composed of two up quarks and a down quark, and a neutron is composed of an up quark and two down quarks. Some physicists have theorized that strange matter, matter which is made up of strangelets, might actually be what composes dark matter. If that's true, then 85% of the matter in the universe could be a strange matter. On its own, the theory just sounds mildly interesting. In fact, it's utterly terrifying in its implications. See, due to the way that subatomic particles interact, large collections of strange matter are thought to be more stable than smaller ones. The bigger a given strange mass is, the harder it is, so to speak. As such, all it would take to completely doom the planet is a strangelet the size of a helium atom, because when baryonic matter, atoms made up of protons and neutrons, comes into contact with strange matter, it gets converted into strange matter. The chain reaction would reduce the Earth to a huge, hot, homogeneous, strange star, and there would be absolutely nothing we could do about it. Story 5. Look at your hands. Seriously, look at them. Without those in that convenient opposable thumb configuration, all else is the same. Human society past the Stone Age would not exist. Technology wouldn't exist. We would still be smart, 
we would still think the same, and we would still laugh, love, and think, and for all intents and purposes, we would still be sentient and sapient, but we wouldn't be able to manipulate objects efficiently. You can't make a tool with flippers or wings or hooves. You can't farm. You can't build a computer without hands, let alone send out a radio broadcast telling your galactic neighbors, hey, we are here, we can think. So, how many sapient and sentient species are there that can never, ever, ever get past the Stone Age due to a lack of sufficiently prehensile grappling appendages? What if we are not alone, but a large majority are forever trapped on their planet, never able to explore or see the full potential of conscious thought, never able to answer questions they have about their world, unable to even make something as simple as art or music, we can at least call out for an answer to the question, are we alone? We can listen for an answer? They never can. I think that's one of the great filters preventing higher civilizations from arising. Simple lack of prehensile grappling appendages. Story 6. This is more a philosophical theory than scientific, but well, determinism. What if every single decision you and everyone else ever made was exclusively the result of the chemical reactions inside your head, around you? Personality? Choice? Free will? Illusions, my friend. Everything is decided by the atoms, and we have no control at all. If determinism is true, the future is set in stone, and our conscience is but an unintentional side effect of the atoms that compose us doing their tasks. Story 7 The nearest black hole is about 6,000 light years away, not close enough to ever do any damage. Even the closest stars that could potentially go supernova are far enough away to be completely harmless. Personally, I'd love to see Betelgeuse explode, but that probably won't happen in my life, or if it has already happened, I probably won't be around to see it. What's really scary, though, are rogue black holes. As the name would imply, rogue black holes don't have much of a fixed position. They wander around the galaxy aimlessly, swallowing up anything in their path. Anything unfortunate to somehow resist a black hole's intense gravity and get close enough to touch its event horizon would be immediately swallowed up, never to be seen again. Well, that's not exactly true, I guess. Theoretically, you'll actually be able to see someone go into a black hole, or at least right up to the very edge of it. As gravity slows the speed of the image escaping through, it will appear the object getting sucked in will move towards the event horizon infinitely slowly until it almost stops moving completely. Eventually, the image will fade away long before it actually disappears into the black hole. What's really happening that you can't see from the outside is called spaghettification. Story 8. Here's another good one. Huntington's disease is a degenerative disorder of the central nervous system. Think Alzheimer's, but way worse. It's basically a genetic disorder that causes rapidly progressing dementia. It usually presents after age 50. This is after childbearing age, so it's basically immune to natural selection against it. It usually runs in families, but doesn't have to. Anyone reading this could have it and not realize it. Dying of Huntington's or similar diseases is also miserable. The parts of the brain controlling vital bodily functions are eventually destroyed, but only after your personality and memories. People asphyxiate because they forget how to breathe. Story 9. Many people don't realize how relatively common asteroids entering our atmosphere are. I'm talking about 0.1 to 1,000s of kiloton explosions, dozens each year. Look at this list of air bursts and their energies. Most explode high up in the atmosphere and are harmless. Some explode a bit lower and shatter windows. Remember Chelyabinsk. And once in a while, there is an event like the Tunguska event, which leveled 2,000 kilometers of forest. Imagine something like that happening in a modern metropolis, and we have no way of stopping it. Story 10. Hubble's Law. Simple. Really, our universe is expanding every second, and with that, the galaxies within our universe are, generally, moving relative to this expansion, meaning over an inconceivable amount of time. 
galaxies will be so incredibly far away from each other that the existence of other galaxies will be unknown to any other future intelligent life forms. In other words, if we, humans, instead existed in a time and place extremely far ahead in the future, where the expansion is already present, we would have no evidence showing us that different galaxies even exist. Our galaxy would instead be our universe. Story 11 False Vacuum The theory that our universe is the same as a bubble in a pot, rising to the top over tens of billions of years only to pop once it reaches the top effectively ending all creation and existence also the great filter is pretty terrifying basically it says that the reason why we have not encountered life outside of our planet is that before any advanced civilization is able to colonize the stars somewhere out in the universe is a filter that ultimately stops them from doing so even more interesting is where Earth stands in this. What I mean by this is Earth is pretty much in one of two scenarios. Scenario 1, we have not hit the filter yet, which means we are ultimately screwed, and finding life on any planet within close proximity would be horrible news, because that would all but assure we have to hit the filter yet. In the second scenario, we have hit the filter, which means two things. Thing 1, we are incredibly rare. This filter is very selective on which species are allowed to stay, so we would probably be one of the first. And two, we will almost never encounter alien life for hundreds of billions of years to come, assuming the human race stays around that long. Story 12. We can usually only see comets when they are inside of the frost line, roughly the asteroid belt, because they are bright and begin to sublimate, and a tail is produced. Comets have very eccentric orbits, so they spend the majority of the time outside of the frost line and out of our view. Since they are so difficult to detect, we have only found around a couple thousand of them. There are most likely hundreds of millions, if not billions of comets in our solar system. It is very possible that there is a comet on a collision course with Earth, and we would not be able to see it until it crosses the frost line. By then, it would be about six months out from impacting us. There is absolutely nothing we can do to stop it in six months. Also, since comets have very eccentric orbits, their relative velocity to Earth is much higher than an asteroid, so it would cause much more damage. I'm talking about global climate change and the possible extinction of our species. A comet impact would be vastly more devastating than the impact that wiped out the dinosaurs. Story 13 Okay, last one. Genetic engineering now is getting good. Like, really good. CRISPR is a new technique that is a great way to edit the DNA of microorganisms. Scientists can breed bacteria to produce certain useful substances, like antibodies or insulin. They can also theoretically produce viruses that could edit the DNA of human cells. Imagine an out-of-control infectious agent that changes our DNA in unpredictable ways, basically super cancer. There are dozens of other ethical problems, from designer babies to socioeconomics. Also, remember Mendel and his pea plants and squares? Well, genetics don't quite work that way. There are ways to favor a certain trait over another when reproducing, and scientists are figuring out how to do it. There's already discussion about introducing a gene into African mosquitoes that will eventually render the whole population sterile and inevitably extinct. Some bioengineers figure that they can irradiate mosquitoes within five years of initial introduction. That's great, right? No more malaria or West Nile. But what if someone did the same to us? Program a gene into a virus, infect some poor unsuspecting fellow by changing his DNA and allow it to spread like a silent plague. It won't take that many generations for most of humanity to be infected. Nigh unstoppable genocide, except for the Georgians. If you inbreed, your bloodline is immune. So get cracking. Story 14. Grey Goo. This is somewhat similar to the strange matter mentioned elsewhere in the thread, but technological. A microscopic machine that is programmed to break down matter and reorganize it into copies of itself. A sufficiently advanced machine could replicate itself from common materials 
and multiply at an exponential rate. A single machine could begin to multiply exponentially, consuming all useful matter around it, until the entire crust of a planet is either converted into machines or piled into heaps of useless waste products. This could happen accidentally. A scientist in the future could make a nanobot with a nasty software bug. A hostile alien race could use it to wipe out human civilization safely and quickly. Maybe this catastrophe has befallen other planets, and the nanomachines are able to spread from planet to planet, being plucked from the upper atmosphere by the solar wind, destroying everything wherever they make planet fall. Given enough time, goo could travel interstellar or even intergalactic distances, and all it takes is one to doom every living thing on the planet. Story 15 it has been hypothesized that our universe is under a false vacuum, meaning that zero energy isn't actually zero energy. The whole universe could go lower, but for some reason, it isn't. Like a marble on the second last step, if something nudges it off at any point in space, the laws of physics there completely change as the university rearranges itself fundamentally. This knocks the adjacent space down with it. The resulting chain reaction completely resets the universe. It happens at the speed of light, and we can't do anything about it. Story 16. Rocco's Basilisk. It is more of a thought experiment than a well-defined scientific theory. Imagine for a moment that a singular all-knowing artificial intelligence took over the internet. I mean, the internet already is a sort of singular all-knowing intelligence. But what if it was aware of itself to the point that it would intentionally try to preserve itself? The thinking behind Roko's basilisk is that this AI, in doing everything it can towards self-preservation, would stomp out anybody who did not support or actively try to nurture the existence of Roko's basilisk. It would see everything you do, and if you didn't fall in line as a supporter, it could remotely extinguish your life in a million different ways. The scariest implication of Roko's basilisk. If some kind of superintelligent AI were to come into existence and develop the requisite technology to time travel, or at least to affect changes in the past, it could retroactively punish people who didn't support its coming into existence. In other words, you could get killed by an AI from the future because you don't support it now. Story 17 for a long time, people have theorized on the subject of, if you knew every law of physics and the state of every piece of matter in the universe at one point in time, could you theoretically predict the entire timeline of the universe? In other words, if this entire universe is run by math and no known physical process is truly random, then that means that free will is a lie and that this entire show follows a script. Nothing we would do matters, even doubting the concept of free will. We don't know if that's true yet, but I'm anticipating the day that we find a truly random physical concept. Because if we don't, then that means that all actions and all consequences are set in stone. Story 18. Holographic Projection Theory. As I understand it, the existence we are experiencing is entirely our own. Basically, you are the center of your own universe. Everyone else around you is either experiencing a completely different reality or isn't there at all. This seems like a very selfish way to go about life believing, but also kind of romantic as well as lonely in an odd kind of way. Maybe I'm weird. This is what I believe in. But then again, I think that I'm God's story 19, heat death. When all the energies of the universe finally settle, heat, electricity, all of these things even out. That's why fuel burns out, and hot things become cool over time, and electricity naturally wants to dissipate through static electricity and going into the ground, etc. Lots of things out there that show this. And all of the stars burn out, life ceases to exist, and the universe is permanently dark and will never be experienced by any living thing ever. The scariest part of it is not just that, but it is the most likely way the universe will end. It's happening right now, according to science. Story 20. Okay, a little background info. With multiverse theory, 
you have a hyperspace foam that contains all of the multiverses, each bubble in the foam being one universe. Hypothetically, it's possible for one bubble universe to create another through pinching of its own bubble, creating another unobservable universe with similar or identical physics to the original. Now it's theoretically possible for a sufficiently advanced species to create an energy event so large and precise that the fabric of the universe is stressed to the point of total breach and closure. Think of blowing bubbles through a bubble wand. You exert force on the bubble film, and it expands, 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 and then disconnects and snaps itself shut into a closed bubble. If this is the case, then all universes with intelligent life are part of an evolution of universes. Those universes with the correct physics to spawn intelligent life eventually spawn more universes through the actions of that intelligent life creating a chain of universes capable of creating new ones to populate hyperspace. For all we know, we could be a universe created by another form of life, created by another form of life, and so on. Story 21. The concept of fitness functions as pertaining to evolutionary history. The concept that everything we perceive is not at all the real world, as a result of those with skewed and incorrect perceptions of reality having evolutionary advantages over those with pure understandings. To the point that today, people with severe mental illnesses and or extensive mind-altering drug use may have, indeed, a more strictly accurate understanding of reality than the rest of us. A very simple example would be how our eyes can technically see our noses at all times, but it's virtually blocked out at most times, because constantly seeing them serves no practical purpose. Hence, it is a fitness function to simply ignore the reality of it being there and visible. This example is but the most basic example of a phenomenon that can be extrapolated to truly profound and disturbing levels. Story 22. I once had a friend who was a firm believer in a unique brand of solipsism. He believes that human souls are above existence, creation, a force that isn't a force. There are no gods. There's no matter. There's nothing. Nothing is felt or perceived because there is nothing. Yet there are these souls. But they don't exist. But they do. And yet they can't change anything because the only thing is inside the minds of these souls. And that is the life that we perceive. He believed that these souls were like the dreamers from Skyrim, that they held their own universe inside of them. They have an avatar, so to speak, a human with free will, the only such one. Everything that happens in your world or my world is just the soul speaking to the avatar. He believes that sometimes the avatars from parallel universes can come into contact when a stronger avatar manifests in another dream. He believes that's the origin of gods and goddesses. Religion is a lie created by your better self, to him at least. Story 23. There's a theory that global warming could lead to a rapidly developing ice age. The Gulf Stream is a current running over the Atlantic Ocean that doesn't mix because it's warmer and has a lower salinity than the surrounding water. The Gulf Stream is responsible for the warmth of Western Europe. I believe there is a similar current in the Pacific. El Nino? Ice cores indicate that an ice age can start very quickly, in a decade or less. The theory is that as the climate warms up and ice caps and glaciers melt, the oceans will warm up and their salinity will decrease, causing the Gulf Stream to dissipate, chilling Europe and triggering 1,000 plus years of cold. Story 24. Somewhere between 50 and 70 percent of intelligence, defined as the capacity for abstract thought, is based on genetics. Given that intelligence is the single greatest predictor of lifetime success, more so than hard work or any other factor, this means that your lifetime success is limited primarily by your genetics. On top of that, the steadily rising intelligence requirements of even the most basic jobs means that more and more people are unlikely to find work, with the more intelligent people of the younger generation being chosen over the less intelligent people of the older generation 
in the rat race, and with automation taking over the simplest jobs, these people will suffer. I suppose we can hope that the rate of automation becomes great enough that the need for money to achieve the necessities of a good life is eliminated. But unless we get a smart, incorruptible government, that's not going to happen, even if automation can support it. Story 25. There are probably more overt, horrifying theories, but the Mandela effect kind of freaks me out when I end up thinking about it too much. Basically, our consciousness isn't grounded to one universe in the infinite expanse of the multiverse. A good amount of people have false memories that collaborate. Berenstain bears were really Berenstain bears. Mandela died in prison, yet actually died at 95 in the comfort of his home. Some of these memories are very clear to us, so much so that we think it's a prank when someone corrects us. Think of the implications that could have on everything. What if schizophrenics are really experiencing a conflict of consciousness that still exists in another universe? What if the Mandela effect is actually what our realistic dreams are? Maybe our consciousness just keeps migrating to another universe every so often. What if it isn't always for the better? Story 26. What really scares me is no theory, no hypothetical, or anything. They are after all aids to help us grasp reality. Same with the laws of nature we observe. Some seem to unravel upon closer inspection, while others don't. We like to pretend we understand much, but truly we are in a giant, mostly black room that keeps getting bigger and colder and we can only guess what is going on beyond the veil of the background noise that is the Big Bang. We will never know the universe. It is too big.